Hey, Nocturnal Recaps here. Today I'm going to tell you about a movie, The Skin I Live In. A story about a plastic surgeon who turned his daughter's killer into a woman to use him for his own purposes. Spain, 2012. A woman in a tight jumpsuit named Vera spends her days practicing yoga and creating small sculptures. Meanwhile, a prominent plastic surgeon named Robert Ledgard talks to students about his experience with face transplants and why it's so important. Afterwards, he pulls into the parking lot of a maternity hospital and a nurse hands him something. Back home, he goes to the lab in the basement of his house to conduct experiments. Afterward, Robert returns to his bedroom and watches Vera through a hidden camera in her room. Robert takes the opium box and goes to her room, where he notices that the girl has with pages from magazines. Robert carries her to the operating room and saves her life. While Robert treats her wounds, the girl asks when it will all be over. But Robert only remains silent in response, and it becomes clear that the girl has been his captive for years. In the house, in addition to Robert and Vera, lives a house manager named Marilia, who knows what Robert is doing and even helps him. One morning, Marilia brings Robert the animal's blood and he goes to his laboratory. With the help of this blood, he creates a layer of artificial skin, after which he grafts it onto Vera's body. Robert experiments on Vera, burning her with a torch, but the girl feels no pain. A few months later, Robert presents his discovery to the scientific community, an artificial skin named Gal. Robert claims that the skin is resistant to burns and mosquito bites, and experiments on mice have shown excellent results. After his report, the head of the medical association asks Robert why he chose that particular name for his creation. Robert reveals that he named it in honor of his wife, who died in a fire. During the conversation, the scientist learns that Robert has been working on the genetic mutation of human cells and forbids him from further experimentation because it is against bioethics. That same night, Robert comes to Vera and tells her that their experiments are over. Vera says that in that case, they can get married and start living as a normal family, but Robert walks away from the conversation. The next morning, Marilia asks Robert to get rid of Vera, as her resemblance to Robert's late wife could get them into trouble. But Robert does not dare to do so, and leaves on his own. At this time, a man in a carnival costume approaches Robert's house and tells Marilia that he is her son Seiko, whom she has not seen for ten years. The woman lets him in and invites him to the table. During the conversation, Marilia watches a news report and learns that her son was involved in a robbery. Seiko wants his mother to hide him for a while and Robert to change his appearance, but Marilia replies that Robert will kill him as soon as he lies on the operating table for what he did. While looking for a drink in the kitchen, Seiko notices a monitor showing Vera's room. Seiko recognizes Vera as an old acquaintance and asks his mother to tell him which room she is in but Marilia pulls a gun on him and demands that he leave. Seiko disarms his mother and ties her up, then goes in search of Vera. After a brief search, Seiko opens the door to Vera's room. The girl knocks him down and tries to escape, but he catches her. Seiko tries to rip a girl and calls her by the name of Gal. He asks the girl how she survived after he left her burning in that car. Vera decides to play along so she can escape with him from this house. At this time, Robert returns home and finds Marilia tied to a chair. Looking at the screen, he sees that Seko is performing forceful acts on Vera. In anger, Robert goes to Vera's room and shoots Seko, after which he hugs the exhausted girl. While Robert tries to dispose of the body, Marilia tells Vera that Seko and Robert are brothers. She gave birth to Seko by a colleague and Robert by Mr. Ledgard, but her son was taken from her because his wife was barren. Vera asks Marilia why Seko called her by the name Gal. She replies that he mistook her for Robert's wife, who looked exactly like Vera. Twelve years ago, Seko committed a crime and asked his mother to hide him at Robert's house, since she worked there as the manager. Robert and Gal raised a daughter named Norma, but everything changed when Gal found Seko in her house and fell in love with him. Together they ran away from Robert but were involved in a car accident where Gal suffered multiple burns. Robert found a mutilated Gal and, despite the betrayal, made every effort to save her. Robert did a lot of research to help Gal, and her condition gradually began to improve. But one day, Gal heard her daughter singing in the garden and decided to look at her. Gal saw her disfigured image in the glass and threw the window right at her daughter's feet. 
What she saw traumatized the girl psychologically, and years later she ended up as her mother. That same night, Robert allows Vera to lie down in his room to become intimate with her. But the girl, citing the fact that Seko has severely traumatized her, asks to wait with this. Robert agrees, and they fall asleep. Robert has a dream about the events that took place six years ago. Robert goes with his daughter Norma to a patient's wedding. Norma has recently been discharged from a psychiatric hospital, but the girl is still taking strong sedatives. Talking to the guests, Robert loses sight of his daughter and goes in search of her. He goes into the garden, where he sees a young guy on a motorcycle quickly driving away. A little later, he finds the daughter, who starts screaming as soon as she sees her father. We are transported into the memories of Vera, who has a dream about a young guy named Vincent. Vincent works at his mother's boutique and is in love with a girl named Christina, who also works at the boutique and is a lesbian. One day, Vincent is invited to a wedding celebration where he meets Norma. The couple go out into the garden to make love, but the girl has a panic attack and starts screaming. Panicked, Vincent knocks the girl out and runs away. A few days later, Robert finds Vincent and rams his motorcycle, after which he puts the guy to sleep with a sleeping pill dart and chains him in the basement. The police tell Vincent's mother that they have found his motorcycle on a cliff and that he has probably lost control and fallen into the sea. But the mother refuses to believe this and claims Vincent is alive. Robert goes to check on his daughter in a mental institution, but Norma does not recognize her father and is terrified of all men. Robert keeps Vincent in the basement, starving him, but takes pity and moves him to a more comfortable room, washing him beforehand with a hose. But a few days later, Norma decides to take jumping out of a window. At the funeral, Robert's colleagues try to persuade him to take a vacation, but Robert refuses and reminds them that they have an operation scheduled for today. Robert chloroforms Vincent and prepares him for surgery. He forges his documents and invites his colleagues to perform a vaginoplasty on him. Waking up after the operation, Vincent learns from Robert that he is no longer a man. Robert puts Vincent in his new room and gives him dilators to keep his new hole always open, as the tissues may stick together and he will die. During one of the examination, Robert confesses to Vincent why he kidnapped him. Vincent says he doesn't remember what happened that night, since he had a bunch of pills and his memories are hazy. But Robert says he remembers everything perfectly. After many plastic surgeries, Robert turns Vincent into an exact copy of his wife and says that from now on, his new name is Vera. The movie moves to the present time, where Robert and Vera gradually begin to improve their relationship, and they think of starting to live as a normal family, which does not please Marilia, as she is wary of Vera. One day, Robert's former co-worker comes to see him and tries to blackmail him to get Robert's clinic. He shows Robert a newspaper with Vincent's picture in the missing persons section. He threatens to tell the police that Robert kidnapped the guy, forcibly changing his gender. But Vera shows up and rescues Robert, saying she loves him and she's here voluntarily. A little later in the evening, Vera and Robert are about to make love, but the girl says she forgot something in her purse and goes downstairs to get it. Downstairs, she takes Robert's gun and kisses her old photo in the newspaper. Back in the room, she tells a surprised Robert that she has been lying to him all this time, after which she shoots him. Marilia arrives at the noise, but she suffers the same fate as her son. The next day, Vera returns to her mother's boutique. Seeing the girl's condition, Christina asks what happened, and Vera, with tears in her eyes, says that she is Vincent and tells what she had to go through. As proof, Vera shows the dress that Vincent wanted to give to Christina, but she refused to wear it. Christina believes the story, but Mother enters the room and now Vincent is faced with another difficult dialogue. 